Hey guys, um, I wanted to talk to you about rounding numbers and percents. Uh, both of these end up in the test packet as problems one through eight. Uh, and these are things that we really have not spent a whole lot of time talking about. You've seen um, rounding before, you've seen percents, but again, it hasn't. our discussions of them have not been formal. So I want to talk to you about rounding first. Rounding is going to be problems one and two, and then the percents is going to be problems three through eight. Um, <clears throat> so when we say rounding, what we're trying to do is get close to an answer or a number, uh, but not necessarily exact. And you do that all the time without realizing it. If somebody, if you have a collection, let's say of um, baseball cards, you don't need to tell somebody the exact number of baseball cards that you have. You would give them an estimate of that um, and you would probably round it. So you might have, let's say, 3,268 baseball cards, but instead you might say, oh, I have about 3,000 cards. They don't need to know the exact amount. They just want to know, do you have three baseball cards, 300 baseball cards, 3,000 baseball cards? So you're just trying to give them something that's close to that. We generally use rounding um, because either we don't need an exact answer or because we're trying to get a nice number, all right? 3,000 is a lot nicer to work with than 3,268. All right, so we round um, and just make our, our numbers a little bit easier to use. So what they might say when you round is, uh, or when they ask you to round, is they might give you a number like 3,268 and they might say round to the nearest 10. All right, and so when they say 10, we come over to the tens place, and that means that we want to say, what is the closest 10 to 3,268? All right, now again, when we count by tens, we would say 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and so forth, until we got up to 3,240, 3,250, 3,260, 3,270, and so forth. If we counted by tens that long, that's how far we would end. And so it's saying, what are the two tens that are closest to this, and which one is it closer to? So if I look at 3,268, it's the one on the lower side is 3,260. The one on the upper side is 3,270. Right? And again, usually what we do is we look at that place and we keep it the same all right? and say, well, then the one under it would be six tens and zero ones, and the next one higher would increase that ten by one. So it would now be 3,270 uh, or seven tens and zero ones. So then we're just going to say, well, which one is this closer to? And if we did an actual number line, we would see that here would be 3,260 and 3,270. And uh, right in the middle would be 3,265. And 3,268 falls right about here. All right. So if we're trying to say, is it closer to this guy or this guy, it's definitely closer to this. How do we know that? Well, halfway is 3,265, all right? But the eight is higher than the five, which means it pushes it to this side uh, of the two, all right? That, the two endpoints, it makes it closer to 3,270. All right, so then that would mean if we were rounding 3,268 to the nearest 10, we would say it's 3,270. All right, let's do another one. Um, but let me just make it a little bit trickier. Let's say it was 4,679 and 0.843. And it said round to the nearest one. Okay, so we go to the ones place right here and we say, all right, what are the closest ones to that? Well, again, we haven't talked about decimals yet. We've got a lot of things. Well, we have talked a little bit about them, but we haven't talked about their names. But 
Uh, if we were to put 4,679.843 right in here, again, when we're counting by ones, we're counting one, two, three, four, and so forth, um, up to 4,678, 4,679, 4,680, all right, so it's asking what are the two ones that are closest to this? Well, this would fall right in between here. It's bigger than 4,679, but smaller than 4,680. So we would have 4,679 on this side and 4,680. So we make a number line. 4,679 is right here. 4,680 is right here. And we uh, this would be 4,679.5. Right, halfway in between. So then we're trying to decide where does this, our number, go so we can decide which one it's closest to. Well, again, it ends in a 0 0.8. 0 0.5 is right here. I didn't mean to pick that same number uh, each time, but 0 0.8 ends up about here. 0 0.84 would be just slightly beyond that. So this would be our number right here. So which one is it closer to? It's closer to 4,680. So round it to the nearest one, it's 4,680. All right, now let me just show you a shortcut because you're not gonna to wanna to do this uh, each time you do rounding. Although I like the conceptual understanding of it, I like that it gives you endpoints here to look at. Um, but realistically what we do, let's go back to the 3,268, uh, is we look at the place that it tells it to us to. It has to tell us a place to round it to if this is a test question. In real life, you get to pick. Um, but on a test or a, a homework or something, it's gonna tell you to round to the nearest 10. So go ahead and underline the tens place. Now that's just our frame of reference. And again, notice in each of these cases, when I was trying to decide where to round to, I put the end points and then I put the halfway point. And notice how the halfway point is always gonna have a five in the place before it. So we're rounding to the nearest tens place. In the ones place, it had a five. Here we're rounding to the ones place. You don't know this yet, but this place right next to that is the tenths place. All right, again, think about dimes, which were worth 10 cents, 10 hundredths. Uh, so that's the tenths place. So again, the halfway, the place before the place we we're rounding to, the halfway spot of the place uh, to the, the right of that place is always a five. All right. So we look at this place and we know that in the tens place, the halfway spot is going to be decided between his right hand neighbor, which is the ones place. And that place, uh, that value of the halfway is always going to be five. So if this number right here is past the five point, it's made it closer to the next one. All right. Closer to the next 10. If it has not gotten to five, all right, say it's a four or a three or a two, then it's on this half right here, or here's our diagram up here. So if it was a 3,263, that would be down here, right? Because it hasn't made it to the halfway mark yet. The question comes in what happens if it's exactly at the halfway point. And then for a math perspective, we decide that it's closer to this end point right here, right? In real life, it's exactly the same, but for math reasons, just so that we all do the same thing, we decide that if the halfway point is our end point, um, not our end point, our last digit, then we're gonna go up, all right? So it's clear if it's beyond the halfway point, bigger than it, we go up. If it's less than it, we go down. If it's equal to it, we also go up just for consistency. All right, so back to this. We go to the place that we're rounding to, all right, the tens place. We look at our next door neighbor and say, did you make it to the halfway point yet? Are you five or higher? If the answer is yes, then this guy is gonna move up, all right? It's gonna go to the next 10, to the next 100, to the next 1,000. So this guy, the eight is higher, so the six is gonna move up. So this becomes 3,207. But remember, we're talking about the tens place, so this is gonna be 70, not 78. Don't just change the six to a seven and leave the eight alone. We're going to the nearest tens place, so this has to end in a zero. If instead, let's say I had 3,261 and I round to the nearest tens place, I look over here and I say, did you make it to the halfway point yet? No, it didn't. That means the six does not get to move up to the next 10 and it stays the same. 
Okay, so this would become 3,206, and then don't forget that this is a 10, so it's going to be 6D. Don't write it as 61. This, when it's to the nearest tens place, this always should be zero to show that it's in the tens place. Okay, so again, just because we go up here doesn't mean we go down here. Don't make this a five. The two endpoints are 60, 70. So it's not going to be 50. That would be way over here. It's not going to be 3,250. So it's either going to stay the same, like that, or it's going to move up to the next one. All right, but never it will never move down. Don't ever change that. It should never be less than what it already is. It could be equal to what it already is, but it won't be less than. All right, same thing here. 4,679.843. All right, I wanted to round to the nearest ones place right here. I look over at my neighbor to the right and I say, did you make it to halfway? Yep, he did. All right, so then this one is even trickier because we've got a little bit more work to do. Um, that means that this guy gets to move up to the next one. What's the next one? Well, it's actually 80 right there because the next one after nine becomes a 10. I can't fit a 10 in the ones place, so that bumps this up right here. So this becomes 4,680. Again, in the interim, what you're doing is you're doing 4,607, and then in this ones place, you've got a 10 again totally illegal. You can't do that. So you're going to make this a zero and or you're going to regroup and give that 10 to the seven. So it becomes 4,680. All right. So again, the whole idea here is look at the place that you're rounding to. Look at the next door neighbor. Has it made it to the halfway point? If it has, then you're going to bump this one up one more. If it hasn't, then you're going to leave this one the same. All right. I'm going to do a second video on percents because I feel like this one's gotten long enough already. Um, so I'll give you a second link for that one.